Hello friends. Welcome everyone to Portraits of Fame channel. Sad ending and a hard life, but her beauty, talent, and great classics will live forever in the hearts of fans. Her life wasn't easy at all, but she managed to form one of the best bands in history. International success came to them thanks to a coincidence, and in the end it became an example of courage, struggle, and strength in the face of adversity and the will to live. This is the memory of Marie Fredrickson of the band Roxette. To continue, I recommend you to subscribe and activate the bell so you don't miss out on valuable information like this today, okay? Gunmarie Fredrickson, member of the band Roxette, was born on May 30th, 1958 in a small town in the province of Scania called Osto, Sweden. She was born in the same year and being from the same generation as other music legends such as Prince, Andrea Bocelli, Madonna, and Michael Jackson, which could be a great forecast of a promising future for her in her career. Her parents were named Charles Costa Fredrickson and Ines Dagmar Hoffer. Marie was the youngest of three sisters and her older brothers took care of her while her parents worked on the family farm to support everyone. At the age of four, the family had to sell the farm due to the precarious economic situation and they moved to another city, where her father started to work as a postman and her mother in a factory. Marie has faced difficulties in her life, including the death of her sister Annalisa in a car accident when Marie was just seven years old. This marked the first sad memory of her life. So, music was her form of refuge and then, she formed a group called Renat with her schoolmates, where they dubbed songs from famous groups. This helped her avoid the bullying she suffered in elementary school. Her brothers also practiced singing, and she learned to sing and play various instruments. In addition, they bought records to listen to the most famous groups of the moment, thus sharpening Marie's taste for music even more. The first single he owned was with the song Valerie, with the band The Monkees. It was exactly at that moment that, aged 17, Marie was enrolled in Scania's music school, where her talent, vocal ability, and facility for composition became evident. She wrote an amazing musical and managed to perform it in different Swedish cities, getting very favorable reviews, thus predicting a bright future in music, as soon as she managed to become financially independent from her parents. In 1978, aged 20, and looking like her idol David Bowie, she formed her first, punk band called Stroll with her boyfriend Stern Huffett. Although they managed to record a single in 1981, the band dissolved in a short time and thus ending, consequently, the relationship with the boyfriend. Mary then joined Mars, forming the band called Mama's Barn, and although recording an album for Sibiais, sales were virtually nil and the band quickly disbanded. In the early 1980s, Marie was part of and collaborated with different groups, mainly rock, with which she toured all over Sweden. Unfortunately, in 1981 came the disappointment with the death of his father, Charles, who, in addition to being an alcoholic, also mistreated his family. On the other hand, luckily, Charles was always passionate about music, so much so that he had and played the violin. As he sang very well, he even rented a piano for the family to practice and that sharpened and stimulated the musical taste of the youngest, Marie. And that was the start for her to become the great legend of world music. In May 1984, Marie released her first solo song and soon after her debut album titled, Headwind, where she received good reviews. It was then that she decided to double her workday. It was when in 1986 she met Progessal, and together they formed the band Roxette. All this, after a long time of her supporting the work he carried out in other groups. It was just when they released the first song entitled Never Ending Love, being included in Roxette's first album. Pearls of Passion sold over 300,000 copies, but was not widely publicized. Marie's international success came shortly after the release of her second album, called Look Sharp, in 1988. Mixing musical styles, she quickly entered the Swedish charts, bringing the songs The Look, Dressed for Success, Listen to Your Heart, and Dangerous. Listen to your 
In this way, Roxette became one of the most popular bands of the 90s. And now, from that moment on, we have one of the band's greatest curiosities and revelations, where the key turn to promising success took place. However, this initial success in Sweden with the new album did not seem to have a good impact internationally. Then everything would change, thanks to an incredible coincidence involving an American student. He, Dean Cushman, was doing an exchange program in Sweden and heard the song The Look on the radio. He liked it so much, he ended up buying the album and taking it home with him. When he got there, he took a copy of the disc and gave it to KOO Radio in the city of Minneapolis, Minnesota. As soon as they started playing The Look, success was immediate and the song was requested dozens of times a day. Little by little, like a fever, it spread from one radio station to another. It was this silent, sneaky event that sparked Roxette's success in the United States and eventually the rest of the world. The members of the duo heard about this story and met with Dean in person, and this happened on several occasions. The single The Look was a huge hit in 1989, where it became Roxette's first U.S. number one rhythm. This was the first song by a Scandinavian artist to reach that position since the Norwegian group, Aha, achieved it with the song Take On Me in 19. The song Listen To Your Heart would become his second number one song in North America. The look would also reach number one in 30 other countries, becoming one of the most successful songs of the 1980s. Thanks to his popularity in the United States, the label M, proposed that he write a song to be part of the band of a movie, which would be released soon. In it, would have the legendary actor Richard Gere and in the female role, an almost unknown actress named Julia Roberts. The songwriter says she already had a great ballad ready. The original theme was a Christmas song and it had been written in 1987 on the piano with really beautiful melodies and a great modulation that only Marie could aim for, called It Must Have Been Love. This song was composed at the request of a recording company in Germany to release them in that market but which the executive did not approve. The representative of M loved the song, and when the movie Pity Woman was released in 1990, the worldwide success. This is all thanks to the great chemistry between the actors and their cast, as well as the film's soundtrack, which became one of the most remembered in the history of cinema. A great interesting detail about this ballad is that the person responsible for the mix and final version of the song was a Chilean sound engineer and producer called Umberto Gatica, nephew of the singer Lucho Gatica and winner of several guilds for his work, who moved to Sweden to record a new intro and add some vocals. So he ended up doing the mixing in Los Angeles. On March 28th, 1991, Roxette released her third album titled Joyride, which was a huge success where fans spread across the world, including imitating and singing her newest work. The song quickly reached number one on the Billboard charts in over 20 countries, and the album sold over 12 million copies, making it one of the most iconic albums of the 90s and entering the list of the 100 best-selling albums in history. Joyride also won MTV's Music Video of the Year. Other hit songs included Fading Like a Flower, The Big L, and Spending My Time. While Roxette was touring Latin America, enjoying her incredible fame, Rumors began to circulate of a romance between Marie Fredrickson and Progesil, but both always denied that there was anything more than a working relationship and friendship. Progesil has described their relationship as brother and sister since they met in their teens, and he believes it was beneficial to their work together. In 1992, they released their fourth album called A Work of Life Songs, recorded during their first world tour with which they visited four continents and gave 107 concerts, with the presence of one 1,700,000 people. In 1993, they released the song Almost Unreal. which was used in the soundtrack of the movie Super Mario Brothers. Unfortunately, the production was a terrible failure at the box office, but the song was very well received and reached the top of the UK charts. On April 29, 1993, Marie's first daughter was born, 
who was named after the singer's mother, Ines. The girl's father is a Swedish musician Michael Bolios, who was a year younger than the singer. Marie stated that if she hadn't met Michael in the early 90s, she wouldn't have been able to keep the same pace for long, as depression and other problems with fame caused her to fall into depression, where alcohol abuse it was too big and she only managed to stabilize with Michael. In 1993, Roxette continued making history and recorded Unplugged special for MTV and Stockholm to honor the network due to the group's great success. Comparisons with ABBA, the most successful group in Swedish history, were inevitable. Although the members of Roxette claimed that it was not as big as the group ABBA, the truth is that Marie came to sing some songs with Frida, one of the members of the legendary band. In 1994, Roxette's fifth album, Crash, Boom, Bag, the most successful song of this work was Sleeping in My Car. Michael and Marie were married on May 21, 1994, and an intimate ceremony attended only by their closest relatives at their wedding. Members and band members were not invited. This fact surprised Marie at the time, due to the repercussions surrounding the subject. Disappointed, she even spoke about this decision in her autobiography, saying that at the time, she just thought the marriage was private. That was the most important thing at the time, she added. At the end of 1994, they started their second international tour, in which they performed almost 100 shows in Europe, Asia, Africa, and South America. Furthermore, they toured China and became the greatest Western band to visit this legendary country. In 1996, they released an album with ballads in Spanish, which included a total of 12 of Roxette's most successful songs, sung entirely in Spanish. Marie received rave reviews for her good Spanish pronunciation and quickly, the album sold over a million copies. She received platinum records in Spain, Argentina, and Chile, in addition to gold records in several other countries such as Venezuela, Colombia, Mexico, Costa Rica and Sweden. All the songs were adapted into Spanish by the famous lyricist Luis Gomez Escolar, creator of great and famous hits. On November 26, 1996, the couple's second son, Oscar Michael Bolios, was born. In 1998, Marie's mother died, who had suffered from Parkinson's since the age of 48 causing the singer to fall into a deep depression. In the early 2000s, the singer confessed to her closest relatives that she had begun to forget the lyrics to her song. In 2002, the bad news began for Marie, who collapsed at home and suffered a fractured skull. After undergoing several medical tests, she was diagnosed with a brain tumor and told that there were some options, but that her chance of survival was only 25% and that it was very likely that she had close to a year to live. The singer underwent surgery that removed the tumor and was later treated with chemotherapy and radiotherapy session. These aggressive medical treatments caused Marie to lose sight in one eye and part of her hearing, as well as seeing limited mobility for for an extended period of time. In 2003, King Carl Gustav of Sweden awarded Roxette the award for the best Swedish band since the worldwide success of ABBA. Upon learning of this diagnosis, her husband redirected his musical career to work almost exclusively with his wife and support her unconditionally. In 2004, as a therapy against Cranko, Marie edited with her husband the album, Change, which would become her husband's only work, in English. In May 2005, Marie announced that she was free of the disease, but it had not actually gone away. In this way, she needed to continue with the treatment, but due to the strong doses of radiation, her brain was damaged, to the point of forgetting how to speak, read, or walk, feeling extreme pain. Despite the serious consequences of the disease, Marie fought to the end and never stopped working, even releasing a solo album with Roxette. In her later performances, she appeared seated and leaning on an elegant cane, but she never lost her smile. Her last performance was in Cape Town, South America, on February 8, 2016. In 2019, a few months before her death, the tireless Marie published her autobiography entitled Listen to My Heart. Sadly, Marie died on December 9, 2019 in her 61st birthday. Her lifelong professional companion, after learning of her friend's death, wrote on her social media, Time flies by so fast. Not long ago, we spent days and nights in my small apartment, sharing impossible dreams and other big ones that we managed to share. I am honored to have known your talent and generosity. All my love goes out to you and your family. Things will never be the same, he stated. So if you like the band too, type 
I'm a fan of Roxette too. Here is a little memory of the brilliant Marie Fredrickson and the band Roxette. Although she faced a sad end and a difficult life, this person's beauty, talent, and great classics will live on forever. Leave us a comment, your opinion, about this great performer and also about who you would like us to talk about in future editions. Well, if you found it interesting and like the information, then take a few seconds of your time to share it with your friends and family. And don't forget that here you'll find news and stories about famous people and celebrities. A big hug. Until the next video.